Okay, thank you. Yeah, how to ensure climate smart ag practices benefit women and men more equally? It's a it's a tough tough question. <laughs> I think the key to this is involving them both in the dialogue and testing of different practices. Um, the issue of, of women um, and others equally participating in many of the um, uh, activities and interventions that we're involved in remains a big one. I think this idea of taking iterative learning approaches uh, very explicitly and paying attention to potential benefits, costs, and risks to women, to youth, or other marginalized groups it is absolutely key. And I also think that strategies um, such as rotating group leadership um, so that women get into leadership positions in groups, um, testing new things like payments through cell phones, I, I'm seeing here um, with M-Pesa in East Africa is, is really empowering women who have cell phones. They can get the payments directly and, and, and don't have to turn it over. You can uh, invest in, as they see fit. So these are sort of small strategies in many ways. They're not huge things, but they can make a big difference. So um, we talk about sort of paying attention to the institutional issues, and this is really the rules of the game. You know, setting the rules of the game so that you're not, you are being more inclusive. Uh, so back to you, Dahlia. Uh, thank you so much, Patty, for that. Um, the second question would be, um, if planning to start an agricultural field project, how can one assure that gender issues are well covered and that the activities that are promoted are in fact climate smart? Another good question. <laughs> um, first of all, I don't, I don't think you can always ensure anything. I think all you can do is take, you know, think about strategies for increasing the likelihood. Um, but stepping back again, that what, what do we know that climate change means? I think we, we know it means increased climate variability. We know it's going to mean more frequent uh, extreme events. And, and we probably know that water is going to really uh, become even more and more of an issue that it already is. So, so what are the implications of this? I, I think I'd like to, to stress that we've got to make research an integral part of, of projects and programs of trying to um, tackle these issues. It might be a small part, but it's a, it's a very important part. We don't know the answers to a lot of these questions. There's still a lot of research to be done. And I think the other thing it means is we've got to think more about forward-looking approaches, because a lot of these communities and others are really not looking ahead enough, and they need to start thinking about that. And we're seeing some really good approaches by NGOs like CARE and others doing community adaptation planning, participatory future scenarios. Um, in CCAFs, we're, we're looking at climate analogs, which is taking people to visit sites, either virtually or in person. These are going to places that already have the climate that you are facing in your future. Um, these farmer-led videos that I talked about with both women and men making them, the crowdsourcing approaches, you know, uh, doing research, um, and I do come from a research angle, so you have to keep that in mind, doing research with um, a very different uh, way of thinking. Instead of a couple of um, tens or hundreds of farmers and doing surveys, reaching out to tens of thousands of farmers through cell phones, um, and things like that. So I, I think, I hope that uh, addresses that question, but it, it is a tough one. So back to you, Dahlia. Thanks, Patty. You've raised a number of, of important issues. Um, you've raised the issue of trade-offs, in a way, uh, so potential benefits and costs, and you mentioned that also during your presentation, so the fact that introducing CSA might lead to higher workloads, so the importance of looking at that. Uh, you've introduced the concept of innovation. It's important to in innovate, think of new things, but also look forward. And you've also acknowledged the fact that climate change is still uh, an area that needs to be explored. There's much more to know, and therefore that research is key. Just one last short question uh, that Maria Lee brought up, which is, in your experience, since you've done a lot of research, 
have you been able to um, find an entry point into policy? So have you seen some of the success stories coming out of your research being translated into, into policies that would then have a very broad impact on society? Great question again. <laughs> Um, and, and it's really near and dear to my heart, actually, linking science to policy. <clears throat> and again, I think that the strategies are absolutely key. And, and what I mean by strategies is, you know, we have to involve policymakers um, much more from the outset and not sort of take, um, you know, these are the climate smart agricultural practices for this area. Here they are. Change the policies. Do something about it. We have to think about how do we involve them in forward planning processes, scenarios, uh, exercises, so that you bring in this information um, and that they start paying attention to what the communities themselves are needing and, and using. I mean, people are taking up uh, new practices all the time. Um, we, we, we shouldn't uh, forget that. Uh, so getting um, you know, decision makers to pay attention to these issues is absolutely important. 